I prepared this simple experiment because I believe that if we can get a linear position of the sensor in a three-dimensional space, we can implement a variety of interesting applications. The IME motion sensor provides information about accelerometers, gyroscopes, and magnetometers, basically. I think the most common sensors are MPU6050 and BN055. I'm sure MPU6050 and Mayonis AHRS algorithm will solve that problem if you need to get the object rotation only. Uh, please check the link at the top right of the screen for the result of the MPU6050 project. This video covers the process of collecting data for preparation for experiments and driving results from MATLAB. Uh, let's get started. Uh, this is a source code for MATLAB that XIO technology released about a decade ago. Uh, as in the description, collect the data first, then analyze the signal using MATLAB to derive the linear position. Since it only calculates with the reading of the accelerometer and gyroscope, I will collect only two data from MPU6050 and BN055. Of course, we need MATLAB to create this test environment. Let's download this source code and open MATLAB. Uh, the script file is the starting point. If you installed MATLAB for the first time, please check if there are two add-ons installed. Uh, these add-ons are required for the filter used by this code to work. If you are ready, you can try running this program right away because it already contains sample data. Uh, you can run it by pressing the play button from the menu or typing script from the command window below. After reading sample data from the CSV file first, calculate all linear position data with the values of the accelerometer and gyroscope in the sample. It's using filters for each step. The calculated position vector data are drawn sequentially on the screen. You can see the linear position moving on the x, y, and z axis. It's moving very fast and the indication of rotation is excellent. Uh, it will be very exciting if it is possible to calculate the movement in the real time. In addition to the sixth of animation, it shows how the accelerometer and gyroscope readings are processed and shows the derivation of the Rasa high pass filter to linear position by step. I think it will be very helpful for those who are interested in data signals or preparing for thesis. Uh, there are gyroscope, accelerometer, tilted compensated accelerometer, uh, linear acceleration, linear velocity, high pass filtered linear velocity, uh, linear position, and finally high pass filtered linear position. Uh, it's time to collect the data. We need to collect data first to operate this MATLAB source code using the sensors we have. I made a very simple Python code for this. It has a function to acquire data via serial com and save it as a CSV file. Uh, if you enter the number of samples you want and click start, the required CSV file will be created. Uh, the GUI was created using the PySimple GUI. Uh, it's very very easy to use, so I recommend it if you need to draw the screen layout in Python. You can download this source code from the below description. Uh, while you're getting sample data, let's take a look at the hardware part. Please refer to the description below for hardware wiring. Uh, there is nothing so special. Uh, here's the source code for the hardware. The left side is BNO055 and the right side is MPU6050. If you look at the root part, it's really all about printing the data from the accelerometer and gyroscope into the serial. It's written in a minimal code and you can remove it if you don't need the display part. Uh, both use the library provided by Adafruit. Uh, it was good that there was no part for calibration in MPU6050. I tested with the raw readings as much as possible before using another code with the calibration. Uh, I will also test with other libraries that have basic noting filtering in the next video. Uh, both accelerometer's range is 4G and gyroscope's range is set to 2000 degrees. Uh, to make the sampling rate closest to 100 Hz, I put the delay in the loop H. Uh, when you acquire 10,000 samples, you will get a 99Hz sampling rate if you use the same hardware. Uh, both devices are mounted to a stationary object to collect 10,000 samples of data each. Uh, sampling is over, uh, 10,000 samples of data have been inserted properly into the CSV file. Uh, I put the last three data as dummy data because they are uh, magnetometer data and not used by the MATLAB code. Uh, put this CSV file in the log data folder of this MATLAB project. 
the rest of the files were removed because they were not used in this project. I set the sample period to 100. This is related to the amount of data the filter will calculate at a time. Uh, I set it up similar to the data sampling rate I acquired. Uh, what do you think about how their renewal position changes in a stationary state? Uh, let's see the result. Uh, the left side is BN055 and the right side is MPU6050. The filter seems to be working hard to converge to 000 as soon as it starts. In general, on the IMU, uh, the renewal position cannot be easily calculated due to the drift in the low frequency region of the gyroscope and the noise in the high frequency region of the accelerometer. Let's look at the zoomed in screen centered on 0, 0,0,0. BNO055 has not deviated much since it reached almost 0, 0,0,0. .0. It's very impressive. I thought the X, Y, and Z values would continue to move within a certain range due to the drift problem, but this was completely out of my expectation. Uh, seems like it has rubbed our biases up with uh, 1800 samples, and since then it's been calculating the proper linear position. MPU6050 continues to try to converge to 0, 0, but it's not easily stabilized. Uh, since raw data output from MPU6050 may be different from BNO055, it seems necessary to modify it so that it can work more effectively using other libraries. Uh, in this video, as a warm-up, we could run the demo for tracking cycling motion provided XIO technology using a very common IMU sensor. I think I need more time to use it in the actual project. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Thank you.